Hey there, Sugar P. So, I wanted to talk to you about volcanoes tonight. Ha! They have become such an exciting part of our life all of a sudden. I've been following the volcano in Iceland for months now. And some of my students uh, were there when it started, and so I was always asking about it, and they were sending me clips, and, and it's been amazing to see. And... You know, it's just by luck that I thought to bring it into our conversation. Um, of course, dinosaurs are a big deal this summer. Um, so maybe subconsciously it's in my head, dinosaurs and volcanoes. And it's part of our, our hangout time now is talking about dinosaurs and volcanoes. But there was a picture. That was it. That was it. I think it began with the picture that we saw at the Zoologis Museum. Um, and there's a video about that. Uh, so it's now like a week though that it's just the thing that like really catches my attention. Um, when we're not together, I'm checking the volcano daily uh, and checking for updates. And when we are together, you're asking about the volcano daily just to get a measure of it. I mean, you love Sarah and Duck. It's it's an amazing cartoon. It's almost my favorite TV show. Um, it's beautiful. It's brilliant. It's lovely. You want to see the volcano if we go to the computer, not Sarah and Duck. You don't even ask about Sarah and Duck. You ask about the volcano. And yeah, disclaimer, we don't spend so much time on the computer. It's like five to ten minutes a day. That would be a lot. It's more five to ten minutes every second day. But we talk about the volcano, and the first day we saw each other, as I'm talking about July 1st right now, uh, the first day we saw each other on this little pack of Sambea, um, it was on the walk home already. You're asking, what's happening with the volcano? Can we see what's happening today? Um, and I, I just love it. I think it's so cool. Uh, and so we sit there watching a live stream of the volcano, or... Often I'm finding drone footage from like the last week. Uh, so I have a good one already picked. And we watch, you know, the live footage of the lava flow live, you know, well, it's, it's within the last few days. It's, but it's happening in front of you. So watching this lava river flow. And it's amazing. It's amazing to see. It's amazing how interested you are in it. And the way you talk about it, it's incredible. It, they are so smug. I you can go leave fauna de so whole orange. I and you you talk about it, they are branding of them. Uh, it's like you can love the idea of it, you love the image of it, you love just watching it. You can literally sit for five minutes of a drone video, spellbound watching it, and once every minute you say something about it. And I love how it feeds our conversation. The rest of the day we'll be talking about how it must have been for the dinosaurs and what it was like to have volcanoes. And they show up in our games. Um, I'll talk in the next video about the dinosaur tails that we have. We have matching dinosaur tails now from the Zoologist Museum. And one of our games was walking around and climbing up volcanoes and watching out for lava and going this way through the room and not that way through the room because there's a volcano over there. Um, you're building volcanoes on the beach um, in the San Kesse. It's, it's just so neat how, how interested you are in it. And it's an amazing phenomenon. There's this video, video, a film from Werner Herzog, uh, who's maybe my favorite filmmaker, definitely my favorite documentary filmmaker. I saw this about three, four months ago. It's just called Volcanoes, I think. But it's Werner Herzog investigating volcanoes. I think it's amazing. Uh, you know, 10 years from now, we can watch it together and, and you'll be delighted. So getting to just share in this again, you know, meeting up, walking home from the playground and hearing you say, Papa, will scare me a volcano we date? When we can say it, can we say will scare me a volcano we date? And again, your rapture at watching the lava flow. The video we saw on July 1st included um, the wall that the government tried to build 
to stop the, the lava flow from coming down and taking down some power lines and some roads and uh, the wall breaking and the lava coming through it. And it's, it's stunning. It's really impressive. And you can see you completely grasp this. It's um, so many other themes to talk about of just how stunning you are, um, how your understanding of things is, is exceptional, Marley. You're years beyond um, where I think an, an average kid would be. Um, your three-dimensional reasoning is insane. Um, it's exceptional. You can build things upside down without thinking about it. Um, off and on, you know, when we're doing something where you blow my mind, I, I, I nickname you, you mean Lille Ingenieur. And we talked a bit about how an engineer is a person who forstår den ting skal bygges up. Uh, stuff like that, you know, like uh, how, how to build things and how to organize things. Um, and you got interested in the word, you understand it. We talked about also that your um, Olafa on my side and Ola uncle on my side, uh, they were also engineers. And you got so excited to hear that they built some of the first motorway in Canada. Uh, we talked really lightly about how radio uh, was something that Olafa basically brought radio to Canada, uh, but also highways. And, I mean, you're really excited and interested in this. Oh, we also uh, we have this great little marble game. I think I might have put it in a video. It's, it's cool. It, it, there's uh, different heights that you can build up a little track to roll marbles down. So you can make them roll this way or that way or this way or that way. Um, and you're really good at it. You're really interested in it and excited by it. And you love the music in it. When the marble rolls over the different surfaces, they're slightly different shapes. They have slightly different bobbles in them and uh, they make different sounds. So you love the sound of it. You love listening to it. Timing it also with the marbles so they come down at different speeds or different intervals. So you're doing stuff as a four-year-old that is is out of out of a four-year-old's world. You're you're way ahead in terms of, like I said, 3D reasoning and 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 building things and construction. It's uh it's really cool. So somehow in in a similar way your interest of volcanoes seems to be uh parallel fields. Um it is I think you're really thrilled to see how the earth works. Um, and on the basic level, it's just beautiful and it's impressive. Um, Eva, who you've seen, my colleague, she's in, been in a few videos. We're talking about your interest in dinosaurs and this volcano thing similar. Eva teaches emotional body and uh, emotional awareness at the school. She's she's also trained as a, as a counselor and is like really plugged in to healthy development and, and emotional well-being. And Eva was thought it was really, really, really cool how you're picking out these rather powerful animals uh, to identify with, putting dinosaurs into your life and this thing of, of dragons that's so meaningful to you. Eva th thought it was, it was really great for you to that you have such strong mythologies, strong figures you can turn to. And ain't yearning, you know, they're similar because you're really into it. And you've been explaining to me, ah, that was so cute, um, why they have the color that they do. And it's because they, they live in the clouds. So their bodies get painted white from the clouds, but their hair sticks up and it gets painted rainbow color from all the rainbows. It's so clear, obviously. And that's the reason we can't see so many ain't yearning. Because they're, basically you were describing that they were camouflaged. So they're, there's something different with them. They're not powerful, they're magical. Um, griffins are doing kind of the same thing. And we found a street right next to here. <laughs> I never noticed. There's like 30 griffins along the street. They're on uh, the railings to a whole, a whole row of apartment buildings. And, I mean, when we found the first four, I had my mind blown. And then we kept passing them again and again. And I do think it's really true. Kids see these things. And adults, we pass them by. So I love sharing eyesight with you. But we found, like I said, like 30 griffins. And you're most fascinated by the fact that they can be anything. They can transform into anything they need. I think that's pretty special too. 
identifying with this magic of being able to, to be the animal you need to be in that moment. They can be a hawk, they can be uh, a lion, they can be a tiger. So again, there is power, there is strength there, but it's also some sort of intelligence, some sort of adaptability. <laughs> You're also so, so interested in uh, big birds. Uh, I was talking to Alessandro about this recently, and, and he was really surprised because he knows, you know, you've, you've also been scared of things. It's been a scary year for you, hon. Um, so, you know, deep water is still something you're really not, not, not going to go. There's a line there, you know, you're not going if you can't see. Um, even going up to, you know, your, your chest in water is really, you know, that's your limit and that's totally fine. You go to your limit and, and you honor it. So it, Ali had wanted us to maybe go kayaking and I was explaining that, you know, you're going to love it, but you're not there yet. Um, we could, we were on a soup board. Uh, in the shallows where you knew you could stand, but as soon as uh, it's out of the reach of where you want to swim, swimming meaning being able to put your hands down and keep your head up, uh, it's not going to happen. So kayak, it's, it's too soon. We'll get there. You'll love it, I'm sure. You love the stand-up paddleboard. Like, so good. Um, so amazing. You're the captain of your own boat. Um, so Ali was quite surprised to hear that. You like birds and falcons and hawks, and, and I mean, you're thrilled by them. So, like with the volcanoes, there's something there. There's something, a, a mix of magic, a mix of, of force and power that the earth has, and just beauty. It is, it's truly exquisite to watch these lava flows. So for today's video, that's just what I wanted to share. I mean... I love watching it. Uh, I, I think it's incredible. And it it fits so well uh, a child's mindset. You are four years old and you're so present in the moment. And that is just so perfect for watching this magical mystery of a lava river. It's, uh, it's truly beautiful. I, I like spending time in that space. My job in the theater, as I'm sure you will get to experience over the years. Um, getting tastes of the theater. You, you got to see some when you're between zero and one. And anyways, that, that's a whole other video to be made um, about, about Marley's experience with the theater and what may come or not. Anyways, I'm just trying to say my job has a lot to do with, with just being really present and aware in the moment. So I love that space of just sitting with something exceptional like a lava flow and you are so immersed in it there. So... It's been really, really, really special to share that with you. Something that was always interesting for me and getting to really touch it with you. There's a new depth, there's a new value, there's a whole other perspective of interest. So, just to say, Papa, well, skiad, are you date me volcano? It's, uh, it's amazing. I never could have even imagined that, that would be one of the many hundreds of details of um, our life together, Marley. I think you can see I love you so much and uh, thinking of you all the time. See you soon, sweetie pie.